Salut, gangsters. So something kind of crazy happened this week. I saw my subscriber count hit 500 people. Five freaking hundred people who are part of the Not Even French gang. And that's just so cool. So to celebrate these kinds of milestones, I always try and do a video that kind of allows you guys to get to know me better. And so I reached out on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, asking you guys to send me questions to do an Ask Me Anything video. And I got a few responses back, so we're definitely going to get into those. But before I get into anything, I just want to mention that I have created an Ask Me Anything form down below where you can send me questions, video requests, whatever it is all year round, 24 seven, and I'll collect them over time. And every time I do a Q and A video like this one, I'll definitely get back to you. But for now, let's get into the questions for today. Cool, so my first question is coming from Lean Back. And Lean Back asks, are you satisfied with your move and would you recommend it? That's a really good question. So overall, am I satisfied by my move to Paris? I think I'm gonna have to say yes to this one. Even though it's been one of the toughest and most challenging things that I've done, I've learned so much, I've grown up so much. It's pushed me so far out of the comfort zone, which is where all the personal growth happens, right? Um, I've met amazing people. I've met people from all over the world with really incredible stories. And I've also experienced and seen things that I just could never have done if I had stayed in New Zealand. Maybe I would have come to Europe one day. Maybe I would have run around the continent like a tourist trying to see everything that I possibly could. But being actually based over here means that I can take my time and just really take it one piece at a time and eat local food and meet local people. The fact that I can take a train two and a half hours away and be in London still kind of blows my mind. But I think that one of the most satisfying aspects of all of this is that the more that I've been challenged and pushed out of my comfort zone and the more that I've been confronted with other cultures, I figured out what the New Zealand culture is and what I value in this life and what's important to me. And I think your 20s are meant to be about exactly that, about figuring out who you are and what you stand for and what you want out of this world and what you want to give to this world. And when I came to Europe, I had very little. I had some savings. I had sold everything I owned except for what I bought with me in my suitcase. I think I had about a thousand euros to my name. And I came over here and I've been able to get my master's degree for free at a great school. It gave me the first opportunity with my internship. I was interning for a huge French luxury giant, so just a world so far away from everything I had known. And you know, experience after experience led me to where I am today in a huge multinational company. There's 90,000 employees. So for an HR person like me, it's just amazing. You just don't get companies of that size and scale back home. But to answer the second part of your question, Lean Back, would I recommend it? Um, no, not to everyone, definitely not. If you don't like change, if you like staying safe and in your comfort zone and you find a lot of security there, and you're not someone who's kind of itching to learn and grow and try new things, then this kind of lifestyle may not be for you and that's totally okay. Living overseas and living somewhere even as romantic as Paris, it's not just one big holiday. There are so many times over here where you feel homesick, you lose your patience, you suffer from separation anxiety. You're confronted every day potentially with a new language, a new mentality, a new way of working, a new way of doing things. I would really only recommend it for people that really want it, have a lot of resilience and have a lot of determination to make it work. It's definitely not for everyone and it's definitely not for the faint hearted. Cool, so question number two is from Masha and Masha asks, how do you manage to find good French courses in Paris and where do you go? So I've tried a few different options in Paris and the cheapest by far are the French courses for adults which are run in the local town halls in each arrondissement. They're called the Corps Municipaux d'Adultes and I'll leave the link in the description box because they're super cheap. So for example, I signed up for 60 hours worth of evening courses. There were around 20 to 30 people in the room I think and it was 131 euros for 60 hours. Otherwise, I found that a core language school has a really good quality to price ratio. You've got smaller groups 
and the price was relatively cheap, I think, compared to its competitors. But I also found because I was studying, I was working in my internship, I was writing my master's thesis when I came here, I had basically no time to learn French. So I'm a really big advocate of self-directed learning and being able to learn when you want. So the way I did this was I bought a really good French grammar book, which I will link down below, and just tried to do a couple of pages of that per week. I also listened to the podcast Coffee Break French every day during the commute. And your cheapest French tutor of all time is Netflix. You pay 10 euros a month and you can watch anything on Netflix in French with French subtitles. So that helps hugely as well. And there's also language meetups in the city, for example, Franglish. And Franglish, for example, is an evening where there's French speaking people, English speaking people, and it's kind of like speed dating. And you get paired up and you spend seven minutes speaking in French, seven minutes speaking in English. And you meet really cool people this way and you get to practice your language learning as well. I think you can pretty much almost do just as well yourself as you can going to these courses. So question number three is coming from Laurent Evitage. And Laurent has asked me if I listen to French music and if so, what are my favorites? So I admit that I probably don't listen to it as much as I should. I've been really into podcasts and audiobooks lately anyway, so my music listening has gone downhill. But when I do listen to French music, I usually find playlists on Spotify. So there's a good one called Nouvelle Scène Française. There's one called French Vibes. There's 2017 Hits Français, for example. So I'll link those down below. So it's just a nice mix of artists. In terms of French speaking artists, I really love Coeur de Pirate, or I guess in a French accent, like Coeur de Pirate. Um, but she's French Canadian, and I also really like Christine and the Queens. What I do want to get better at is French classics. Like my boss recommended that I listen to Telephone, for example, and I've started trying to listen to karaoke kind of playlists just so that I can get to know like the great classics, nostalgic kind of French hits. But if you've got any recommendations for me on that one, please let me know down below so that I can grow my French music culture. The fourth question that I have is from Mon Ami Gabi, and she has asked me how I transitioned from a student visa to a resident visa where I was able to stay in France and work full time. So if there's anything I can help you guys out on, it is visas. <laughs> um, as a non-EU citizen, I have been on visa after visa after visa every single year that I live here, I have to renew my visa. I started out on a student visa, and then at the time, just because I was finding it very hard to find a company that would sponsor me, I actually went down the relationship visa route, which is called the Carte Vie Privée et Familiale. And that was just the best option for me at the time. But they've just recently made it so much easier for foreign students and talent to stay in France. So if you graduate with a master's one or master's two in France, you can unlock a special status after graduating on what is called the APS Jeune Diplomé. And this means a young graduate work permit. And this isn't a visa as such, but it allows you to work part-time while you're job hunting and looking for that permanent full-time contract. And once you get that contract, as long as you're earning above a minimum amount, I believe it's 36,000 euros, you will be eligible for what's called a passport talent, a talent passport. And this is a four-year visa that allows you to live and work in France. If you want any details on the step-by-step -step process for this kind of stuff, please let me know down below and I will film a video on that if it's something that you guys are interested in. Cool, so moving on to number five and this is a question from Sarita. And Sarita says, I moved to Australia recently and spent two and a half hours going grocery shopping because it's all new and you don't know and don't trust the brands. I'm really struggling with how long basic tasks like this are taking did this happen for you? So the answer to this is absolutely yes. Everything takes longer while you're getting used to it. Going grocery shopping, going to the post office, going to the bank, 
it's gonna take a lot longer, everything's new and you're learning a lot of new stuff. When I first arrived in France, I wanted to be really independent. I went out walking to find a supermarket, to find a place to buy some towels and a lamp and just some basic household gear like that. And I was really proud of myself when I was able to do these tasks, even if they took me hours. And I came home and I was telling my French friends about what I bought and it turns out that I went to the most overpriced and low quality supermarket in Paris. Like I really was a fool. So my recommendation would just be don't be stubborn and don't be too proud to ask. Like ask everyone, ask the locals, ask other expats wherever you are. So for example, in France, we have a Facebook group which is called New Zealanders in France and I'm part of that Facebook group. And ask questions in these kinds of groups, but I will say be specific when you ask the questions. So don't just say what's the best supermarket because everyone's gonna have their opinion on that. But you can say, you know, for a small family who's on a budget, but very much prefers to buy organically, which supermarket would you recommend? And if you ask specific questions like that on these groups, it's really awesome. You get a lot of feedback. And I think you can't go better than just asking the locals about where they go. But I would say as well, be kind to yourself because moving to a new country takes time. So getting a degree in a subject that you've never studied before, it's going to take time to get up to speed and become an expert. And I would say that when you're in a new country as well, people are going to give you a lot of advice. So start notes on your phone. So have a note for restaurant recommendations, for grocery brand recommendations, for all of these kinds of things and just note it down because otherwise you'll find yourself being like, oh, I'm sure they told me which brand of flour was the best, but I can't quite remember the name. And just take those notes, ask lots of questions, speak to everyone about it. Don't be afraid to ask silly questions just until you feel up to speed and like you're completely autonomous in your new life. So that's all the questions that I have for today, guys. I just wanna say a big, Thank you again for helping me get to the 500 subscriber milestone. And the next video celebration will be for the 1000 subscribers. For this video already in response to popular demand, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a video completely in French. Please just tell one friend about me. Tell one friend about this channel. And if every subscriber that I have tells one friend and gets them to subscribe too, we'll get to the thousand and you'll have our celebratory video en français. But we're not there quite yet, guys. I've still got lots of cool videos coming out. And I'm also going home to New Zealand very soon, so I hope to be able to film a little bit over there and maybe do a vlog for you guys. If that's something that interests you, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll say see you next time. A bientôt.